What is going on, Governor? It's school here, and today we're going to do a guide for El Cid. We just realized we don't have one of those, so we are overdue, my friends. If you like videos where we break down commanders, you should definitely like and subscribe, because we're going to do that for every single commander. And Saladin, I mean, we should make Saladin guides, so that's on the way. So when we do a commander guide, there's a couple things that we talk about. First, the skills then the talents, how to obtain, and lastly, but perhaps most importantly, the pairings. So let's get this party started. El Cid is a really interesting commander. Lot to talk about here. First skill is Famous Warrior. Deals direct damage, damage factor of 1,000 to the target, disables normal damage attacks and active skills for one second. Think of this a little bit like a skill done. The only downside here is that I think you generate some amount of rage when enemies are hitting you, so it also hinders your rage generation just a little bit uh, when they don't get that normal attack in on you. Next skill, and this one's actually deceptively uh, good. I mean, it's a lot of damage. Poem of El Cid. El Cid's troops have a 10% chance to deal additional damage. Damage factor max 1,000 to the target. The thing that I'll point out here is that I don't know if there's an internal cooldown on this ability. It doesn't list one, but there might be like a once every 5 or 10 seconds sort of a cooldown. So for instance, the comparison point that I'll give would be Freddy. Freddy's second skill uh, can trigger only once every five seconds. It's a healing factor of 1,000, which, I don't know, I don't think that's as good exactly as a damage factor. Uh, and the percent chance to trigger is exactly the same. So is there a cooldown on El Cid that's just not listed? I don't know. We'll go with it at face value, in which case it's really quite good. Next skill, also really quite exceptional, increase archer's defense by a max of 20% and march speed, pay attention to that, march speed by 15%. This skill means that El Cid is a viable commander in the open field. You can actually get to and from the fight, which you know is something that I perhaps overvalue. The next skill, unyielding, when the armies have been reduced to less than 50%, increase damage of all troops by 5%. Percent max of 25% and march speed by max of 25%. I mean, that's incredible. That is like charge talents for cavalry. El Cid in an army means you can get away from the fight, which is pretty cool. Final skill, expertise skill, kind of hard to obtain, but out of control, increased damage dealt to infantry by archers by 5% and decreased damage taken from infantry by archers by 5%. Um, so ultimately, uh, anti-infantry commander and does some damage, but not as much as other commanders. That's because you're getting some utility here out of this almost stun. It's also only almost a stun because the enemy can still move around. Um, so overall, I think these are, skills are really interesting. Um, the thing we need to talk about is what you do with this silence. There's a bunch of things we can talk about. We'll get to those in a minute. Let's start to talk first about the builds, three trees available, archer, versatility, and skill. In my opinion, the versatility tree is a nothing burger. There's really not a lot there that's of value. So you're going to focus in on archer and skill trees. Now, if we go and get a look at those... There's a couple things that we need to talk about. Whether or not El Cid is the primary commander in your configuration is super relevant. The talents of the primary commander apply. The skills of the primary and secondary commander both apply. Now, two ways you could build El Cid if he is the primary commander. Um, if he is, I'm inclined to believe you want to have a lot of raid generation to get uh, the stun proc more frequent, right, to get that disarmability happening more frequently. In that case, you'd first make your way over to Rejuvenate, then over to Feral Nature. From there, you'd grab Razor Sharp. At this point, you've burned a lot of your talent points, but don't stop yet. You really want the March Speed off in the right-hand side of the tree over here, assuming that you can bring Full Archers, and optimally, by the time you've hit this level where you can max the skill tree and be in the Archery tree, you've got full archers to bring to the battle, you probably still want to pick up Venomous Sting. 
If, however, you wanted to go full archer route, you could do that with your skill tree as or your, your talent tree as well. Um, I would still grab Razor Sharp, make your way all the way up to the top for Whistling Arrows, and then from there, head over to Rejuvenate for that extra rage generation whenever a skill fires off. That said, I'm going to make the argument that perhaps El Cid shouldn't be the primary commander. We're going to talk about that more in a second. It's all going to come together around this ability, which is very, very important. We're going to talk about some game mechanics in just a minute. First thing we do need to talk about, however, is how you get sculptures for El Cid and in what order you would apply them. There's a number of ways you can get El Cid sculptures, uh, and those include gold keys. It includes occasionally showing up in the expedition. I mean, I've gotten maybe two ever from that. You can use universal sculptures, and also El Cid shows up in the Mighty Governor, and the Daily Chest. That's right, the Daily Chest. I'll just show this real quick. I talked about it in my last video. These daily special offers include a legendary chest that has a chance to drop a legendary. Uh, if you do not have Cao Cao expertise, then Cao Cao is what you would get from this chest. If you do, then Martell is what you get from this chest. And if you have both Cao Cao and Martell expertise, then El Cid is what you get from those chests. And that's actually exactly what we get uh, on Chiskul. We've pulled down some number of those chests. Uh, we pulled three of the chests, which by the way, if you do all three, you're guaranteed to get a legendary at this point, which is kind of awesome. We did three of those chests and got a total of 15 legendary commander sculptures, which is amazing. Then we did it the next day and we got two. And even that seemed pretty good to me. So um, the drop rate is not incredible, but it's a way you can buy your way into legendary commander sculptures, including El Cid, even though most folks, I mean, that's kind of a stretch that they'll have both of those commanders already expertised. Now, if you're applying those skills to El Cid, this is actually pretty straightforward. I think you kind of want to max the first skill. Then you want to unlock the second skill, but in my opinion, Make your way up to either the third or fourth skill getting unlocked because I'm all about that march speed. I'm all about that march speed if what you want to do is use El Cid in the open field. And, you know, look with the 15% base march speed with archers, then the additional 25% if you get below 50% health, you can really cruise on the battlefield. And I would argue that that is a really, really strong proposition, in which case you want those as many points as possible to get into the march speed. Now, let's talk about pairings because I think pairings are really, really interesting. The thing that I'm most excited about with El Cid is the possibility of a silence chain. Now, how would you, you, you execute a silence chain? Um, first thing we need to talk about is the way that skills work, and this is maybe way more detailed than I should get into in a commander guide video, but it works as follows. The first commander, when they cast their skill, they cast the effect and it does the damage, but the effect only applies on the next turn. So then there's a turn of nothing. Then the secondary commander casts their skill. And then whatever effects would have applied from that apply on the next turn. So what does that mean? If you wanted to do a silence chain, which I think is actually a thing that's not such a bad idea, Herman would have to be the primary commander. Here's why. Here's why. On the first turn that a skill effect goes off, there's no silence yet. Herman has a silence ability as well. There's no silence yet. In the next turn, turn two, the silence applies. In the next turn, turn three, the silence is still there because it's a two-second silence. And El Cid would then cast his silence ability. And on the fourth turn, now El Cid's silence ability is active. You've got three seconds of silence there that have gone off, and hopefully you've generated enough rage that you can do it all over again. Maybe. Maybe it takes a couple players rocking that combo to really be effective and to sort of silence lock another player. Um, but look, you know, El Cid's got a lot of rage generation, and he's got the skill tree, right? So the way that I would do that is you use El Cid as the primary then, Boom, you go all the way up to the top for Feral Nature. Boom, Razor Sharp, max your Rage Generation. And I think it could 
be a thing maybe if you get lucky with some of the procs from National Hero. Uh, uh, we're working on El- uh, on Herman a little bit and El Cid to see if we can test that out at some point. I would argue that perhaps just like some more traditional combos would make sense for our good friend El Cid, who, look, brings March speed to your archer unit. So for instance, a pairing that, you know, is pretty straightforward and makes a lot of sense would be with Yi Song Ye. Yi Song Ye, also an archer commander, a lot of synergy there, cares about damage, going to get a 50% skill damage boost, which, you know, okay, so uh, El Cid doesn't do a ton of damage, only 1,000 damage factor, but still, 50% boost of that is pretty darn good. In the testing that I did, it's not a straight 50% boost. In other words, they're saying 50%, but when you work with all the other things that influence damage, it ends up being closer to like a 39% lift in damage. Um, But that's neither here nor there. The synergy still exists, and I think it's pretty good synergy. Another commander you could get a look at is Kusunoki. Phenomenal archer commander, not nearly as mobile. Um, however, it's got some nice AoE, which is a thing you care about in the mo- open field. Kusunoki doesn't have the march speed to really be as exceptional as I'd like in the open field. El Cid offers that, which I think is kind of a cool pairing. Now, more broadly, you might say, well, what if we pair El Cid with some generalist commanders? There's a few suggestions we could take a look at for that. Um, I don't feel all that great about Freddy or Mehmed II um, or really Tao Tao because El Cid cares a lot about archers. And while these are some general commanders, I'm just not all that excited Um I guess you could use full... The reason I'm not all that excited is because what these commanders really want is rage generation, not just more damage and utility, right? So El Cid is bringing utility. It's it's movement speed, but I don't know. I I guess it could be good. I guess it could be good with Frederick and like Caesar, those types of commanders. It's just not... My first choice, I'd rather hunt for more synergy. Um, for instance, Yi Song Ye with Frederick is some sweet synergy because Yi Song Ye elevates the skill damage and Frederick has big skill damage, right? So I'm looking for more skin- synergy than, than sort of just the march speed that El Cid is offering. Um, to that end, generalist commanders that offer some of that would be like Boudica, who has the rage generation, which I think is really nice. So you get that skill effect more frequently. Um, I also feel like uh, a commander, I was going to say Pelagius, but not really because Pelagius cares about cavalry. That's not a thing. Um, I was going to say a commander like maybe Joan of Arc, who generates a lot of rage. If, you're, if you've got sort of a pure utility unit that you're making, you once again probably want Joan of Arc as the primary, not uh, El Cid. And what you would do with your talents over here is you'd probably max out for Cage of Thorns, enjoy the mobility from Hasty Departure, get Rejuvenate for the Rage generation, um, and, uh, yeah, you know, you'd do Emergency Protection as well. But you'd you'd sort of run around on the battlefield buffing and uh, minimizing the enemy's ability to deal damage. I think that's kind of an interesting combination. There aren't as many combinations as I might normally pursue with a commander because, you know, El El Cid has kind of an interesting narrow focus. He's got some march speed, he's got some damage, and he's got some utility. Um, You know, generalist commanders that I I don't love for the same reason I, I didn't love Freddy here is that the thing Osmond really wants, if you were to make this pairing, is a lot of rage generation, which is not exactly what El Cid brings from his skills. Does from the talents, but not from the skills. Um, so you could pair them to make Osman more mobile, but I, I'm not in love with that pairing. A generalist like CPO, you could be looking at. Um, it makes the unit more mobile. It makes it so you're doing more damage once the army gets weaker, which is kind of an interesting synergy because you actually want CPO in some ways to get weak because that's when healing starts to happen. Um, overall, I'm not in love with the combo. If I'm to, if I was to summarize, here's the places I would put El Cid, and and in some ways it's sort of a narrow banding. I'd put El Cid with Herman. I'd put El Cid with Isong Ye. 
I would put El Cid. Hmm. Maybe with Boudica. Maybe with Boudica. Um, probably not Barca, because Barca cares about mixed troops. Um, at an epic level, you also could be looking at Kusunoki. Less options, but actually a commander that I'm working on with Chiskul. Uh, I'm working on El Cid because probably going to run around with Isonye and El Cid. Now, there is some stuff that people do with El Cid that I don't know if this is actually a thing, but they, they play around with it. And um, I've seen people use this in a variety of situations where, for instance, in a garrison defense, you swap in El Cid as a secondary commander when the health of the garrison is less than 50%. And that is because of the 25% damage bonus. Now, you know, look, you're losing out on the march speed over here and the march speed over here, but, you know, overall, the skill damage here is good. The extra damage over here is really good, especially if there's no internal cooldown. Um, and 25% damage is actually kind of a boatload. The only downside is that, like, Gosh, this expert C skill feels really lackluster to me. Um, unless maybe you're doing a rally against specifically and a set of infantry commanders. Eh, I don't know. Um, overall, I think El Cid is kind of an exciting commander. If you're focused on archer units or you want to put a bunch of march speed into a pairing, um, then El Cid's a pretty solid choice, assuming that pairing is going to be run with full archers, so you actually enjoy the benefit of this third skill. Now, it's worth pointing out the fourth skill doesn't actually require you to have archers to, to benefit from, so it's useful in a mixed army, but again, not particularly optimal. So I'd be curious to hear your thoughts around El Cid. I know a number of folks pair Herman with El Cid and use them in the context of battling uh, bosses for the Karak ceremony to keep them silenced. They use them in the context, uh, perhaps, of battling holy sites, although, I don't know, a holy site's a pretty tough cookie to crack with solo marches. I don't know if you're going to pull that off too effectively, um, but you get the idea. Let me know what your thoughts are about El Cid in the comments. I think for a time, Isonye and El Cid were sort of a master pairing, very hard to beat. Subsequently, I think some pairings have come out that conquer them. Um, but let me know down below. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And until next time, my friends, you have fun. Smashing the kingdom.